Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. This is step one in our exercise of building a custom sales spreadsheet for Dodgy Brothers Sales. And we need to start off by building some custom columns that we will use to populate drop down lists that we will use to classify our data. Now this technique we're using this with a custom list but you could use this to customize a document library and classify documents that you've added into your document library or you could use this as a uh, technique for adding classifications to an existing list as well uh, so that you could uh, later sort and filter your data. So that's actually the whole point of this is we want to be able to sort and filter our sales data by uh, categories and for example by product category or by store location so this is where we start so where we're starting is I'm going to create so I can do this uh, I'm currently in my list view at the moment so I could do this through create or I could head up here to site actions up on the top left and come down to more options either either way is fine just depending on where you happen to be at the time now where we're heading next uh, so I'm looking here at the create dialog if I click list and I want to make a custom list now I'm going to call my custom list uh, this is my product click on more options and these are our official product categories now in this particular case we're not displaying this on the quick launch because this particular custom list is going to get used in other lists and libraries but it'll never do much by itself so we don't really need people to be able to get to it. All they'll see is a list of categories. So we'll say don't put this on the quick launch. And let's create. And we now have the beginnings of a custom list. Now up here on the ribbon, I'm going to go to list settings. So now the techniques, just as an aside, the techniques we're doing here will work with uh, SharePoint 2007 as well as SharePoint 2010. Just your navigation interface is a little bit different with, with SharePoint 07. I'm using SharePoint Online here, uh, but uh, if you're using SharePoint Foundation, Standard or Enterprise, all of this works pretty much the same way. So on the ribbon here over on the right, I'm going to list settings and clicking list settings. And I want to modify my columns. Now, by default, it's called this standard column title. So I'm going to click on title here. And I don't really want to call this title. I might want to call it product category. Excuse my. And it's really a good idea to use the description. Now, I'm being a little bit naughty here today and just putting the column name in as the description. But uh, it, you're benefiting yourself in the future or other people that have to maintain the system. If wherever you see that description box, if you put something sensible in there, it will help going forward. OK, and the rest of the settings, I'm pretty much going to stick with the defaults. Uh, I do accept that maybe 255 characters is a bit generous for our product categories, but uh, we can live with that for the moment. In the real world, you could reduce that down if you wished. Let's go OK. Now, what we need to do here, I'm just going to head up to the breadcrumbs and clicking on product categories. This is why I like SharePoint 2010. It's just the navigation is so nice. Up on the ribbon here, I'm going to click the list tab and over on the left, I'm going to go to my data sheet view. Now, rather than type in here, I'm actually going to be a bit lazy. 
I've got the data in an Excel spreadsheet so I can actually copy that data across from Excel and in this data sheet view which is very much like an Excel spreadsheet we can paste it in so as it happens I have an Excel spreadsheet here and I have some categories that maybe I've exported from a point of sale system or we've got them somehow from somewhere and I'm just going to copy those and then clicking over here in SharePoint I can paste and there they are so that saved me a little bit of work there and I'm just going to go back now to my standard view and I've got my product categories entered in here very nicely and the beauty of this is we can add more product categories from time to time. A little later on when we're actually building the custom sales list, we'll find that there is a, a choice type where you can actually enter these values into the list itself, into the column properties. But it's much more efficient to have this sort of thing as a standalone list because over time there'll be new product categories and we want to make it as easy to maintain as possible. Now also, because this is going to be used to populate a drop-down list, we want this to be in alphabetical order, or typically you want this in alphabetical order, because end users like alphabetical order with drop-down lists, it's easier to use. So let's do that. What I'm going to do here uh, is go up to Modify View. We're just modifying the standard view. Don't really need to see the attachments, not that that's critical. Instead of sorting by ID, which is the effectively an auto number that SharePoint creates for us. I'm going to sort by product category and that's all we need to do there for that one and OK. And I've now got my product categories in alphabetical order. Now sometimes you want these things in some other sort of an order uh, that might be gov governed by importance or the likely likeliness of it being chosen. In that case, what I would recommend is you have an additional column that you call sort order or sequence or something to that effect, and then give each entry a number and then sort the view by that number, and that will give you uh, a non-alphabetical order, but one that's not a random order or effectively the order we added them in, where you get to control the sequence. So that's all we need to do there for part, uh, part one of creating our drop-down list. Now, when we come back in a moment, we're going to turn this into a site column so that we can use it anywhere. Because throughout this organization, these product categories are probably going to be used as a drop down list in, in a number of different places. So we want to make it effectively something that's available to us globally. So we're going to turn it into a site column. We will show you how to do that after a brief word from our sponsor. And we're back to SharePoint and creating custom lists. Now, we've already made our custom list and we've populated it with some values. So our next step is we're going to turn it into a site column. And as a site column, we'll get access to it in any list or library where we want to classify records or items or documents using our product categories. So, uh, so we want it to be available globally in any sites or subsites, hence we're making it a site column. Now, you may find when you try this in the work environment that even though you might be the site owner, that your site admin has uh, withheld the permission to create site columns, and there's good, good reasons for this. Uh, so you may need to uh, just approach your site admin and say, look, we've made a list with some values that we want to use uh, in a drop-down list uh, in multiple lists and libraries, can we make it a site column and discuss the name? Uh, but even so, even if you can't do this yourself, it's useful to know what the process is so that you can discuss it with your site admin. So let's, let's actually do it. So I'm heading up to Site Actions and down to Site Settings. And in Site Settings, under Galleries, I'm going to Site Column and I'm going to create a site column and I need to give it a name and I'm going to call it product category 
it's going to be a lookup. Now, choosing lookup as my column type will cause the screen to refresh. And I'll just scroll down a little ways. And I'm going to choose uh, what, what group to put it in. Now, I don't have an existing group, but I could make a new group to suit. Now, the idea with the groups is uh, just to make it easier for you to classify uh, these these site columns so that later on when you come to do maintenance you can look under a particular group and there'll be your site columns otherwise I'll get lost there's there's too many of them so uh, again a description is a good idea uh, so this is going to be product category now We've got some options here. Do we want this to be required? I'm going to say no. If we said yes, it would make it required wherever we used it. I'd rather have the choice because there might be times when we do want it required and other times when we don't. So if we say no here, we get the option again when we actually use this site column. Now we need to say what list or library these values are coming from and they're coming from product categories. Again, the screen will refresh and I'll say display the column product category. Now, I'm not going to choose uh, allow multiple values at this stage. Uh, by leaving it now, I have the option later. Uh, so uh, where I would allow multiple values if a product could belong to multiple categories. But we can, we can set that later. So I'm just going to go OK now. And we've now defined a site column. Now if I scroll down a little ways here, past all the built-in SharePoint ones, uh, just as an aside, it's worth having a little bit of a study of the built-in SharePoint columns, because if you need a particular column, there might, might already be one there. And you'll notice here we've got product category uh, available as a site column. If you ever need to edit the settings, you can just click the link there and you'll see our various settings. So we're done there with our site columns. So in the next exercise, when we actually build the custom list itself, uh, we will use that site column uh, to uh, help us classify our sales records as we add them in. Uh, but that could also be used with documents as well. We could go to a document library and add an additional column based on that site column to classify it might be technical manuals or reference material by a product category. So thank you for your attention. I hope you found that useful and come back for the next session where we continue on the process of creating a custom list.